Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're starting on getting our corn planter ready for uh, plant 2022. Scooter is getting the finger pickup meters put back into the boxes. We have uh, sent the uh, finger pickup meters uh, in and had them tested to make sure that there is nothing wrong with them. They are 100% uh, functional. Uh, and by testing them, that's how you find out. So uh, we figured that... Uh, we get this all put back together today because it's a rain day. Um, what we're doing is we took off all the no-till holders off of this planter because we really didn't care for them all that much. And we're putting back on, we were able to get a set of the Yetter residue managers to put on this planter. A friend of ours had a 16 row that uh, a wing broke off going across the field and uh, he was parting a planter out. So uh, we were able to get a good deal on, uh, well, we bought all 16 of them, so we have spares. So Dad Strength and I are working on this. We've done stripped all the no-till ones off, and now we're gonna start bolting all the uh, Yetter residue managers on. These are called row cleaners, residue managers, whatever you wanna call them. And basically what they do is they're kinda like a garden weasel. If you've ever played with a garden weasel in the garden, as they roll, they flip everything out and they clean a nice, about a four inch wide strip of nice clean dirt and flip all the corn cobs and corn stalks out of the way and then make a nice clean path for the disc opener. So uh, let's get these mounted and uh, get the planter ready. Okay, so we're getting these brackets put on for the residue managers here. It's pretty simple since the, the holes are already drilled and everything since they were the same holes that were used for the uh, no-till holders. The no -till holders. So basically dad strength runs the impact up there. I put the four washers, four nuts on down here and hold them on the ranch. And Scooter watches, don't you? Yeah. Scooter's busy greasing. Making it a mess. He's got grease everywhere. He had it in his hair, we had to pressure wash him. Didn't you? Say what? You get grease in your hair? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I'll take a wrench. Dad strength and hammer them tight. Make sure bracket's straight where you want it. That's good. Top one. Bottom, next one. Three holes exposed. Three holes exposed. Um, right there. There we go. Just like so. Ready to go. So we got, uh, well actually we've got six rows done now. And we've got uh, six to go. go. So these will be real nice. All right, let's put these other ones in. Okay. Well, we got all uh, 12 row cleaners put on. That went quicker than we thought it was going to. We kind of got a system, all three of us, uh, got them put on pretty fast, and uh, that's done. So now the next thing we're gonna move on to is uh, we're gonna oil the chains, we're gonna get the boxes put all back on, and then uh, we're going to order some of the uh, spiked closing wheels. What we're gonna do this year is we're gonna run one smooth one on one side and a spiked one on the other to uh, help with uh, seed to soil contact and to really firm up that seed furrow and uh, get that seed planted nicely. So it's something that we've been wanting to try and uh, this is the year that we're gonna try it on. So it's uh, still gloomy out. Uh, soil temperature as of right now is still only around 50 degrees. So uh, we're still not in a hurry to start planting corn. We only got one shot at this this year since the input costs are ridiculous. So we're gonna make it count. So we're actually going to uh, hold off a little bit on planting corn. Um, a lot of guys tried to do some planting already, but uh, they farm a lot more acres than we do. So time is kind of important. Uh, we can wait just a little bit longer because we don't have as many acres to get covered and it won't put us as far back in the fall. 
So, uh, so when the time comes, we'll get planting. But uh, I'm not going to push it till we at least see 60 degree soil temperature. So uh, we'll get those ordered, and uh, once them come in, we'll get them put on the planter. What do you think, Wilson? Helping us get the planter ready? You just like the camera. Every time I pull the camera out, you got to get close to it. What do you think, Scooter? Are you eating again? Maybe. Are you just here to party? Sometimes. Or are you here to work? I uh, play. You like to play. So Scooter's actually retired. Um, he actually doesn't have to work. He uh, made some pretty good money off some offshore accounts that we, we just don't talk about. But uh, he's actually retired. So his big thing is work here and hunt for morel mushrooms when they're around. So uh, he says he can smell them. I, I don't think that's true. But uh, so anyways, uh, Wilson, he's also retired. Aren't you, buddy? Yeah, you're retired. You live the easy life around here. You just chase mice and... You don't even chase mice. Yeah, you don't even have to chase mice because your your master buys you case after case after case of canned food and bagged food. So you don't even have to work for it. <laughs> okay, let's get back to working on the planter. So I'm going to follow behind Dad. I want to watch and see what the planter's doing exactly through this cover drop. Again, a little rough. So it's doing a really good job. So to give you a little history on what we got going on here, uh, this is our actual first time of planting a uh, cover drop of this uh, caliber, I guess like you can say. Uh, we've always done a lot of just cereal rye, but this is the first time that we've done a crimson clover, turnip and radish uh, mix like this. So this is kind of experimental to us. But we've done it for a few reasons. The one reason was we're following a mint crop. And with the cover crop, we're, we are hoping that if there is any herbicide residual left from the mint, that the uh, cover crop would soak that up over the, the winter and the spring and, and uh, suck that out of the ground, if there was any. Um, there shouldn't have been any to begin with, but you just never know. And since the herbicide for mint kills corn, we thought it'd be a good idea. Another reason was we were trying to build the organic matter on some of the sand hills on this farm. Um, because the organic matter will help uh, store some of the water uh, from the irrigation and just help build the soil up on the higher sand. And another reason is, is the radishes and turnips and things like that, they, they offer nutrients to the corn. So by planting right through them, if those seeds end up close to a turnip or a radish that's rotted underground, it'll actually suck some nutrients from that radish or that turnip. So there's a lot of benefits to cover crops. They are expensive to put out though. So that's, you gotta, you gotta weigh out your options. Cereal rye is about the cheapest to put out as a cover crop. I think the planter's doing really good in it. Okay, we'll get over here right behind it. And now we've got the spiked closing wheels on our corn planter, so that actually helps crumble off the side of the seed furrow and smash it back in. Uh, we're running one spike and we're running one smooth closing wheel here on the back. Oh yeah, that's looking real good. Dad said instead of putting anhydrous on this, we might actually just uh, put on uh, liquid fertilizer with a colder cart so we don't have to worry about the knives dragging through the cover crop and falling up. But we are going to wait till it's about a foot tall to do any side dressing on it. Okay, so I'm going to fall into the end of the field. i got to make a phone call real quick. 